friends, I'm Tatiana Spiteri, you are watching Blogovision, welcome to my channel and please subscribe if you still haven't because here we discuss all the weird things that happened at Eurovision. Today we are talking about WTF moments of Eurovision 2023 and there have been quite a lot, well, as usual, but we know that this year was particularly on fire and let's start with WTF moment number one. And that is, of course, the fact that despite the public win of Katia, Finland and everybody in the audience cha 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 ing cha 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 only came second. The first was Loreen of Sweden. Yet again, Sweden has won. Despite the public massive vote for Katia, despite all the screaming, Katia only came second because jury's preferences went to Sweden's Loreen and our tattoo. Sweden! Our 12 points go to Sweden! Sweden! Now, what I want to talk about here is that even though jury gave Loreen a lot of points, 12 points, do spawn later we saw the televotes, the public votes by countries. And none of the countries gave Lorene a 12-point grade. Nobody, none of the 37 or 36 minus Sweden countries gave Sweden 12 points. They only gave her either 10 or 8, which means people did vote, but they didn't vote, you know, enough as to give her 12 points. Now, our Katia got 12 points from so many countries that in the aftermath is just like, oh my god, like how could it be that so many of us were voting, so many countries were cha 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 and whatnot and sending their love and support and nothing. And of course, probably for you it wasn't much of a WTF moment, but Katia was so mm, upset about his well, he calls it losing, yeah, to Loreen and losing to Sweden. And Sweden and Finland have always been quite competing countries, you know. Uh, they've always been challenging one another. Not to forget that in Finland there are two official languages, Finnish and Swedish. And that means that, of course, there is always some kind of tension. Katia was so upset, but in fact, it's not losing. It is still winning. It is historic for Finland to come second. It's the best result since Lordi in 2006, since the monster's heart rock. Hallelujah! Hard rock! Hallelujah! However, in the aftermath, as you're thinking about it, you go like, hmm, too many factors come into play. First one, that next year ABBA, Swedish, is celebrating its 50th anniversary since they won in Eurovision. Mm, big deal, won't you say? So even if Finland had won it, I saw in the comments to my reaction, thank you guys for so many reactions, uh, Finland would have had to host the Eurovision 2024 and then in any case they would have had to invite ABBA and make this, you know, uh, a nice memorable throwback uh, moment. So ABBA's 50th anniversary. Then Eurovision producer, boss, manager, call him whatever you want, Martin Österdal is Swedish, as you know, and maybe that's one of the reasons jury always give a lot of points to Sweden, whether it was the best song of the competition or maybe not really. When you look this freaking beautiful, I can't go on, I can't go on. Feels like I'm stuck here in time while I've been trying to forget ya. Just wanna get, get, dance you up. Is it too late for love? I wanna know. Is it too late for love? Mm. Is it too late for love? So baby, bye bye. Wish you the best. But hold me closer, I'll go and leave for the sun. And Martin Osterdal is celebrating his anniversary again. 50. He's turning 50 this October which means that next year could also be kind of celebratory and maybe not really, you know, to a big scale, but also it could have been mentioned that Martin is celebrating his, uh, you know, big birthday and he's been managing Eurovision for so long. He's recently released a book about his Eurovision, you know, experience. So kind of, you know, it all sort of comes together that it was sort of predefined maybe that a jury would give their love to Sweden. You can never predefine how the public votes. Yeah, you cannot really 
you know, sort of like change results last minute. And uh, in any case, Judy wanted to have like a safe, safe kind of guaranteed lowering, you know, 300 something points. And then, you know, if Finland even gets a lot, even most, you know, public votes, like 400 something, it would still be very hard to beat Loreen, even though the final result was only a 60 or so point difference between Sweden and Finland. We all know, right, that it's not that little, in fact, uh, to make it over that when they were talking about 370 something points that Karia has received from the public. How many more could it have been? 420? 30, 40, you know, it's kind of hard to get much higher than that. And it's the second most in agreement kind of public vote for one singer, for Katia. Yeah, it's incredible. Oh my God. Interesting fact is that Swedish media are also not 100% in support of uh, Sweden again crowned, being crowned at Eurovision. And in the media, there were these comments that it's not really what Sweden wants to always win, not by the public votes, but mostly by the jury vote. Quoting a recent uh, Swedish newspaper, Lorena is talented, but nobody likes a country that wins too often with the help of the jury. What do you guys think about that? Our WTF moment number two, Finnish public. It didn't give any points, any points from 1 to 12 to Lorene, as later the scoreboard of public votes showed. Hmm. Now the jury, I'm not talking about the jury, right? The jury of Sweden gave 12 points to Karia to Finland. Now Finland gave 12 points to Sweden. Mm -mm. Love, love, peace, peace. But when we see the televote results, when we see the scoreboard after the final show, what do we see? Finnish fans of Karia so didn't want Lorin to win that they didn't even award her with one point. Mm. Now, it doesn't mean that nobody voted. Maybe you personally have, yeah, if you live in Finland. But that was not enough to turn these points into this final top 10 leaders that Finland had voted for. I think it's a little bit like, you know, on the one hand, we are all friends, friends, love, love. On the other hand, it's like, we are not going to give you any points whatsoever. <laughs> so a little bit childish if you ask me, right? Like, well, even if you don't love Laureen as your like top three singers, you are still going to give her votes, right? The Finnish audience felt like this is our year. Let's not, you know, like spoil Karia's win by voting up Laureen so much. In any case, our jury are going to give her a lot. <laughs> and that's pretty much uh, what happened. Uh, still, you know, not giving points isn't too good. And what did Karia say about that? Mm -hmm. It was like, Mm, it's good, you know, my audience supported me, what can I say? <laughs> what can I say? A little bit too competitive our career, yeah. Moving on to our WTF moment number three. And that, of course, is what happened during Karia's performance. Why did he bump into this wire? Why did it almost, you know, knock him down? Like, where did it come from? Yeah. Now, as press, I have also been watching like so all of the shows, all of the rehearsals. I had watched all the uh, dress rehearsals, right, that uh, the press was allowed to see. And did I see any kind of problem with the wire? Well, there was maybe like a small kind of issue, but it was in earlier rehearsals. And then it all felt like smooth, semi-final smooth and so on. And suddenly in the very final performance. We see this strange wire situation going on and we see Karia like suddenly reacting and lifting it up. And if he hadn't, he would have probably just fallen down. <laughs> but overall, if we talk about, you know, accidents at Eurovision 2023 in Liverpool, it wasn't so many really accidents. I couldn't say that like, you know, anything was that dramatic. We didn't have any stage invaders, like for example, in Lorin's uh, case of national performance in Sweden, uh, when some kind of eco rights activists uh, jumped onto the stage and waved the banners and our queen had to start singing all over again. <laughs> Now, WTF moment number four that I just have to talk about, and I think you are all thinking about it, like, 
you remember that our predictions for France and Spain were so high and that they were considered to be, you know, top 10 finalists by the bookies, by the fans. We were falling in love more and more with Evidamon, <laughs> more and more with Evidamon. <laughs> and a Spanish performance was so hyped, you know, there was so much talking about this kind of combination of, uh, you know, kind of classical flamenco with modern electronic uh, elements. And uh, what do we get as a result? France and Spain got only 16th and 17th spot um, in the final chart. Now that hurts, that sucks so, so much, especially Spain's five points. Five points from the public. Spain, five points. But that leads me to a much like wider kind of conclusion because the more I watch Eurovision and I've been following Eurovision for 20 years <laughs> yes guys I'm an old dinosaur of Eurovision already it gets confirmed like year in year out that between the first and approximately seventh eighth ninth position you may forget about high televotes not the jury scores but even jury are kind of you know like uh, forgetting the first several performances and even though they're not you know giving votes exactly giving their points exactly in the same way as uh, viewers they have this criteria or whatnot but still if we look at the final board like up to the ninth place public hadn't given any points any good points apart from maybe Poland and Blanca which got uh, 81 points quite impressive but still under 100 let's just take a look everything from the first spot and up to Lorin and uh, public votes Austria only 16 Portugal only 16 I could have but okay for Portugal there wasn't too much rooting for Austria I'm so upset I'm so sad the girls were just kind of killed by this first position to perform and neither the jury nor the public gave them much unfortunately as a result only 15th place that's low that is low 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 and uh, now we have switzerland only 31 points from the public performed third uh poland 81 that's kind of a high result for being the fourth only serbia again upsetting 16 points very very upsetting even though vocally our guy isn't that strong but come on the performance was something memorable creepy weird dark sleepy but memorable you have to admit that and even though judy haven't given it enough points but what about the public I say simply running order, you know, the running order was not favorable to some of the countries as usual. And that's the result. France, everybody's kind of predicted top 10. France, only 50 points. Cyprus, 58. Spain, 5. And only then goes our Sweden, which already got, oh my God, how many? 243 uh, points. Mm, what do you guys think? I think it's like, as I said in my previous uh, prediction videos, I said, just looking at the running order, somebody's going to be heard of the big five. And that's exactly what happened. I just didn't expect that both France and Spain would have been hurt. I thought one of the countries would have been hurt a lot by the uh, final um, points, would be kind of deprived of a lot of points that it deserved. And in this case, it was both actually france didn't get enough spain got extremely extremely low although on spain i can say myself i wasn't really like wow crazy about the song and i didn't even make a kind of a you know big of a prediction that the song would be high in the final scoreboard originally um but you know since everybody was sort of pushing oh ganadora the queen you know you start believing that this is top 10 material However, neither to the jury nor to the people it was that outstanding. And that leads me to WTF moment number five. <laughs> and that is, what is with the colors at this Eurovision? What is this kind of, like, I don't know, kind of causing epilepsy uh, color palette? Uh, most of the countries included this red, bright red color, which already started irritating a lot of viewers especially those who have been watching not only the final and semi-final, but also uh, the rehearsals, dress rehearsals, jury shows, family shows, but not, you know, like, it's just too much, too bright, too in your face, you know, and uh, that started sort of, you know, losing me at some point. You just start looking away from the screen. <laughs> Man, 
Let's take a look. Who was in red? Austrian performance, red. Portuguese, super red. Uh, Switzerland, no. Poland, uh, all colors of the summer. Uh, pink as well. Uh, Serbia, at some point, changes to red, like from bluish, darkish colors, then goes to this kind of bloody red as it goes to the Mortal Kombat type of uh, part of the song. <laughs> Um, then Spain couldn't be more red, you know, that's like in the first several, how many positions are we talking right now? We're just talking the first eight countries. It's already red, 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 red. After Sweden goes Albania, black and red. <laughs> yeah, with this uh, handkerchiefs dancing. Albania always prefers red for some reason, maybe because their flag is red and they go for this black and red palette most of the time. I don't know. I think they should change it to something more. Uh, you know, something different and more memorable and colorful. What did I put as my sixth? Hmm, as my sixth, I put Norway. Why? Because, guys, this discrepancy, this time I must say, like, yeah, there was a lot of jury and televote discrepancy, a lot, although there were kind of, you know, several countries that where the jury and the public were almost unanimous, but not on this one and like I don't think there is a bigger gap in Norwegian jury votes and public votes compared to all other countries. Norway! 216 points! The power of the people, man! Uh, 216 public points versus only 52 jury points. It's like, you know, jury, for example, didn't have to appreciate Finland so much. It's not vocally, you know, that great of a song, but they saw Finland in the top three countries in the end. So they kind of, you know, I think, uh, you know, they were kind of forced. The jury had no choice but to appreciate Finnish performance altogether as a conceptual kind of thing and uh, put it into the top five, even though jury should be more on this vocal kind of polished um, and perfection kind of side. But this discrepancy, guys, more than 150 points, we're talking even more than 160 points, yeah? That's incredible. And uh, yeah, so what? Like, Alessandra is only 20 years old. Yes, she doesn't have yet, like, big albums uh, and collaborations and signed contracts and so on. Probably now she does. As our girl is going on tour of Europe. Uh, and it uh, doesn't mean that the jury should discard it. Like, okay, somebody's talking about the whistling note not being perfect to let it be. Uh, she just got tired by the end of all of these rehearsals, performances. You know, she was also opening the semi-final, which is hard on her. I believe she puts a lot of pressure on her voice. And they kind of intentionally made the song very low, just a little bit even too low for her in some moments. Uh, I don't know why, but our girl could have sung you know, much uh, kind of stronger and cleaner if the song hadn't been all that low. Yeah, uh, she is comfy in most of those notes, but, you know, that sort of undermined her strength in the right uh, moments, either too low or too high. I don't know. It's like I already feel there is some kind of, you know, you're talking about the curse of UK, the curse of, uh, you know, voting against Germany, uh, kind of not giving any points to Spain very often, but this is also sort of a curse because let's remember our Kano and I see a spirit in the sky. I see a spirit in the sky. Where did our guys land? Like they were the winners of the public votes in the semi final and in the final, and they only came sixth in the overall result in the final blows my mind, guys, like, and the jury were so merciless to them as well. Now, if the jury here in this case, if they had given our Alessandra, Queen of the Kings, let's say 150 points, we would have been talking about 400 points overall, and that is a massive result, but 216 plus 52 only makes it less than 300 and that was kind of okay you know she's good but she's not gonna win the show and uh, the third one in the end was israel i think you know girls were both like it's uh, had a good level of performance and vocals but i don't see i i don't see why jury are so discarding norway 
what do they have exactly against that because vocally their vocalists are usually you know maravillosos <laughs> and uh, I don't see why it should be like so discarded by the judges she was in a good position in the running order why did they not give her more points because in the second half of the show there weren't that many good standout acts which would be so remembered I've asked so many people who have watched Eurovision this time and they're like, oh, Norway, 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 Alexand Alessandra, oh my God, the queen. It sounds so like medieval and eloquent and beautiful lyrics and beautifully executed. What is there not to like for the jury? I can imagine what there is not to like by Katia. <laughs> I can imagine what there is not to like in Croatia's performance, but I don't see what there is not to like in our uh, almost uh, flawlessly singing um, Alessandra. And if your vision is all about giving the path to the young talents, this is your young talent, you know what I'm talking about. She would be the She doesn't look like junior Eurovision, she sounds fierce like Estonia's Alika, although Alika's vocals are of course uh, much more trained. But, uh, you know, then we see Estonia and Alika getting like uh, into top five of jury votes and Norway not making it even to top like uh, 12, 13. Now I see it very strange, very, very, very strange. Let's see, guys, what do you think about Alessandra's uh, jury <laughs> kind of discrimination? Yeah, uh, do you feel that there is already some kind of uh, negativity against, you know, Norway among the jurors? I don't know how to comment upon that. I don't see a reason why. I just don't. I don't. There are certain things I understand and certain things I don't. But let's finish our video. This is getting too long now with the fact that um, despite all the competition, I think the uh, it was a really, really, really interesting revision to watch it was very memorable the announcement of results of the votes made people cheer a lot this was so much fun watching Katia's supporters scream in the audience making it difficult for the hosts to continue the ceremony you all remember this embarrassment in kind of children calm down by the hosts of um, BBC now calm yourself guys oh, calm yourself just ignore everyone yeah. Great hosts, by the way. I have nothing against them. Well done. They were in a very stressful situation with the Carrier's fans. Just almost, <laughs> as I said at some point, it looks like if Carrier doesn't win, they will break the roof of the arena after the show. But overall, it was a super, super entertaining Eurovision to watch. I mean, it, there were not many toilet breaks in this final, let's be honest. And um, even though everybody goes like before the final, before the semifinals, like, oh, you know, songs are kind of boring in this Eurovision, you know, kind of a weak Eurovision this year. And then everybody is watching, like, cannot take their rights of it. Like, oh my God, what is going on? You know, go Finland or go Lorin, you know? Uh, and it was kind of two camps, Lorin camp and Finland's camp, yeah, Karia's camp. Or oh, maybe you love both. Write me in the notes. Uh, and of course, as usual in Eurovision, here I'm giving you a few moments of backstage love, love, peace, peace. <laughs> Did you enjoy watching this show? What are your WTF moments? Drop a comment and join my channel. Do not forget to subscribe and give me a like. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just nice to see if you've watched this and enjoyed this. See you guys in my future videos. Stay tuned for more news on the host city of Eurovision 2024, where I'm, of course, going. Nothing in this world can stop the spread of her wings. She, queen of the kings. Cha cha cha. En capelka canta ta ma il ma aha. Niku cha cha cha. Oh my god, I'm bad, baby, shut up, yeah.